Picture this. The silver screen flickers to life, casting a warm glow across the room as you settle into your seat. The year is 1950, a time when technicolor dreams and captivating melodies held the power to transport audiences to worlds beyond their imagination. And then, there it is, Ani Get Your Gun, a cinematic gem that etches itself into your memory like a timeless melody. As the opening scenes unfold, you find yourself whisked away to a world of dazzling performances and unforgettable characters. Perhaps you recall the exhilarating rush of emotions as Annie Oakley, played by the incomparable Betty Hutton, steps into the spotlight. Her determination, wit, and undeniable charm shoot straight to your heart, leaving an indelible mark. Or maybe it's the chemistry between Annie and Frank Butler that dances across the screen, sparking a magnetic pull that's impossible to ignore. As the story unfolds, you find yourself tapping your foot to the infectious tunes and chuckling at the witty banter that flies back and forth. It's as though you've become a part of their world, sharing in their triumphs and heartaches. And oh, the spectacle of it all, the lavish costumes, the dynamic choreography, it's a feast for the senses that leaves you craving more. And now, let's pull back the curtain and shine a spotlight on some random facts that add a whole new layer of fascination to Annie Get Your Gun. Did you know that the film was a fictionalized account of the real-life sharpshooter Annie Oakley, who joined Buffalo Bill's Wild West show? Or that the song There's No Business Like Show Business has become an anthem of the entertainment industry itself, transcending its original context? So, whether it's your first time encountering this cinematic masterpiece, or you're revisiting it like an old friend, Annie Get Your Gun continues to capture hearts and minds with its enchanting melodies, and captivating performances. It's a reminder that the magic of the silver screen can transport us to places where dreams come to life. Life. Annie Get Your Gun, a 1950 musical film, originated from the Broadway stage and is based on the true story of sharpshooter Annie Oakley. The film introduces iconic characters like Annie Oakley and Frank Butler, whose romantic rivalry and sharpshooting talents drive the plot. With a unique blend of musical numbers, comedic elements, and Wild West settings, the film's style captures the essence of entertainment from that era. Starring Betty Hutton as Annie, the film's unforgettable songs like There's No Business Like Show Business have left an indelible mark on popular culture. Its impact is seen in its numerous revivals, adaptations, and references in other media, solidifying its place as a classic in the world of musicals. Annie Get Your Gun's fusion of captivating storytelling, memorable tunes, and larger-than-life characters continues to resonate with audiences, cementing its legacy in the realm of musical cinema. Ma, 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 ma. Louis Calhoun's unexpected turn in Annie Get Your Gun in the realm of Hollywood's golden classics. 1950's Annie Get Your Gun stands tall as a shimmering gem. But behind the glitz and glamour of this musical extravaganza lies a tale of unexpected twists that left an indelible mark on the film's legacy. Frank Morgan's unfortunate demise, a sudden heart attack during the initial stages of filming, could have derailed the production. However, the showbiz adage, the show must go on, held true. Louis Calhoun stepped into the role of Buffalo Bill Cody, infusing his charisma and gravitas into the character. A seamless transition, it seems. Yet, eagle-eyed viewers might notice a fleeting nod to Morgan in Buffalo Bill's horseback entrance. A blink and y'all miss a cameo of Morgan before the camera shifts to Calhoun. Yet, it's not just the casting that saw a twist. Busby Berkeley, celebrated for his kaleidoscopic choreography, initially directed sequences that promised a different visual feast. However, as the wheels of production turned, his footage found itself on the cutting room floor. The final product showcased reshot scenes, ensuring the film's harmonious tone remained intact. Annie Get Your Gun dances through history as a testament to adaptability. Calvern's unexpected rise, Morgan's quiet homage, and Berkeley's creative transformation, all blending in a cinematic symphony that continues to captivate audiences. And so, in the annals of movie lore, Annie Get Your Gun shines not just as a Broadway adaptation, but as a tale of resilience, tribute, and artistic evolution. 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 Ginger Rogers pursued the role of Annie Oakley in the 1950 movie adaptation of Annie Get Your Gun with Fervor, ready to discard any compensation concerns. In her 1991 autobiography, she revealed instructing her agent Leland Hayward to spare no effort in securing the part for her, regardless of the financial terms. Even stating shed work for a mere dollar if it complied with the law. 
However, Louis B. Mayer, the formidable studio head, deemed her unsuited for the rollicking character, retorting that Ginger should stay in her elegant high heels and silk stockings, doubting her ability to capture Annie Oakley's rambunctious spirit. This candid exchange, etched in Tinseltown lore, underscores the distinct casting dynamics that shaped Hollywood's golden era. Golden era. Golden era. A sneaky lyric, a stolen tune, the intriguing tidbits of Annie Get Your Gun and the vibrant world of 1950s Hollywood musicals. Annie Get Your Gun, Sean Bradley is a beloved classic. Amidst the harmonious melodies and captivating performances, hidden tales of creative ingenuity and legal tussles lurked, adding intriguing layers to the film's legacy. A musical number You Can't Get a Man with a Gun is a standout in the film, but an astute observer might notice its uncanny resemblance to True to the Navy. This earlier tune, performed by Clara Bow in Paramount on Parade, bore striking similarities to Irving Berlin's composition. Paramount's later threat to sue regarding its use in Dollface only heightened the drama, adding a layer of legal intrigue to the song's history. A twist of lyrical cleverness emerged in the iconic duet, Anything You Can Do, I Can Do Better. Anna's line in your hat might seem innocuous, but it slyly danced on the edge of controversy. The phrase, once prohibited by the 1934 production code due to its scatological connotation, saw composer-lyricist Irving Berlin outwitting the Breen office. Betty Hutton's spirited delivery elevated the lyric, while Judy Garland's version offered a more cautious interpretation, revealing a fascinating behind-the-scenes play with censorship. The casting of Annie Oakley, the sharpshooting protagonist, also bore its share of anecdotes. Before Judy Garland's eventual selection, the role saw the names of Doris Day, Judy Canova, and Betty Hutton tossed into the mix. Hutton's journey took a unique turn, as she initially filled Garland's shoes before fate had her stepping into the role herself. Annie Get Your Gun captivated audiences with its vibrant performances and memorable tunes, but these lesser-known details add layers of intrigue to its narrative. From legal echoes in its melodies to sly wordplay and casting capers, the film's history proves as colorful as the songs themselves. And so, amidst the harmonious notes of this cinematic gem, the echoes of creative challenges and triumphs continue to resonate, enriching the tapestry of Hollywood history. Director Shuffle and Musical Revisions, unveiling the drama behind 1950's Annie Get Your Gun in the bustling realm of Hollywood's golden era. The 1950 film Annie Get Your Gun stands as a vibrant chapter in cinematic history. Amidst its tuneful grace, a dramatic underbelly emerges, revealing a tale of directorial changes and musical shifts that left an indelible mark on the production. Originally slated under the vision of director Busby Berkeley, the reins of the film's direction were unexpectedly passed to George Sidney. A seismic transition, marked by artistic differences, took center stage. The intrigue deepened with the inclusion of Charles Walters, initially poised to helm the film after Berkeley's departure. Yet, before the cameras could roll, Walters found himself ousted from the director's chair, igniting a series of events that would echo through time. The sonic tapestry of Annie Get Your Gun witnessed its own evolution, adding an original song to its repertoire. Irving Berlin, the musical maestro behind the Broadway sensation, bestowed the film with Let's Go West again. However, the fates decreed its removal, leaving the song to wander in the realm of deleted creations. Echoes of this forsaken tune resonated through recordings by Judy Garland and Betty Hutton, ensconced within the soundtrack CD unveiled by Rhino. Notably, Hutton's rendition, complemented by her visage on Warner Home Video's DVD, offered a rare glimpse into this musical might have been. Yet, amidst the harmonious disarray, the human narrative pulsated with its own beats. Betty Hutton, embodying the titular Annie Oakley, voiced a sentiment both candid and poignant. In a candid interview, Hutton unveiled the stark truth that MGM's crew cast a shadow of doubt upon her, preferring Judy Garland in her stead. A clash of expectations and realities played out behind the scenes, casting a pall over the process. However, time has a way of reframing perspectives. At a recent unveiling of a remastered print, the film's surviving cast and crew united in praise for Hutton's portrayal. A vindication of her artistry, her contribution to the celluloid tale was acknowledged with fervor. Curiously, amidst the echoes of her triumph, Hutton's absence from the event added a layer of complexity to the narrative, showcasing the enduring complexities of Shoba's camaraderie. 
In the annals of film history, Ani Get Your Gun stands as a testament to the interplay of creative vision, musical interludes, and the human spirit's resilience. With directorial batons passed and harmonies refrained, the movie emerges as a multifaceted gem, reflecting the gleam and grit of its era. Grit of its era. Grit of its era. As we bid adieu to the enchanting world of Ani Get Your Gun, we find ourselves woven into the timeless tapestry of its narrative. Just as the characters aimed for perfect shots under the big top, this cinematic gem hit the bullseye of our hearts. Whether you've reveled in the show-stopping musical numbers or marveled at the spirited exchanges between Annie and Frank, this 1950 masterpiece continues to resonate across the ages. In the glow of the screen, we've laughed, sung, and even shed a tear or two, discovering a piece of ourselves reflected in the character's dreams and aspirations. Annie Get Your Gun isn't just a movie, it's a vessel of emotions, a time capsule of an era that still manages to bridge the gap between generations. The melodies linger, the dialogue dances, and the essence of that charming old world glamour lingers in our hearts. As we take our final bow, I invite you to reflect on the personal cadence that this movie has found within you. What scene struck a chord? What song remains your secret anthem? Share your cherished memories and thoughts, allowing the magic of Annie Get Your Gun to ripple through the tapestry of shared experiences. Thank you for taking this delightful journey with me, a chance to explore the sparks of connection we each hold with this cinematic treasure. Until we meet again to exchange stories, memories, and insights, keep the spirit of Annie and her sharpshooting prowess close to your heart. Warmest wishes and grateful applause. Full applause. Full applause.